on behalf of uh, maratha chamber of commerce industries and agriculture i'd like to welcome all of you especially the speakers uh, here dr anand deshpande now uh, is the founder of and Persist uh, persistent systems and also our vice president of the mccia sir uh, k s prashant with the md of ideas revenue solutions this is girin the customer founder and uh, director and ceo of ideas to impact innovations and of course in the chairing the session steering the session is uh, is amit raspe uh, with the chair of our it and its committee and i see plenty of familiar faces in the audience um, and i hope uh, many more will join in so today is actually a special day uh, about a year plus ago we discussed about future of it post covid thinking that you know in the next few months we will all be settled and the new normal will already be in it looks like covid isn't over yet might just come back in with a lesser intensity for some months or a year to come in that uh, again sir background uh, dr anand ashpande suggested why don't we have another session uh, similar topics and also sharing the learnings of the year plus that went by so uh, in this context we have really said we must do it so uh, with these uh, eminent panel um, in place and uh, quite a few audience already here let me request um, amit paranspe to take over and steer the session over to you amit thank you uh, thank you sudanwa and uh, welcome everybody uh, for joining this session and uh, we are going to have an interesting discussion over the next 45 50 minutes and after that i hope to take uh, uh, some questions from the audience uh, please post them in the chat box uh, here on zoom uh, some of you have already sent uh, those to me via twitter as well and that's uh, that's fine too so just as sudanwa said uh, you know this uh, this session is really an offshoot of what we did about a year back when covid was new when the pandemic was new we had a very interesting session and that session is available on the mccia yet because we had a lot of different uh, uh, discussions about what had happened in those uh, one or two months and what will happen now many of those things actually did come out right in terms of the impact on the it industry and how it was able to deal with some of these challenges Many of us didn't expect things to remain this way for this long. It's been uh, over a year since that session. So, what we want to do now is to find out what is it that we have learned in these uh, last few and software industry, and uh, how we have been able to react to these uh, unprecedented challenges. and uh, have kept the business uh, business of it and software mm -hmm. running mm -hmm. and uh, we have had some interesting opportunities come up our way uh, when i say our way to the it and software industry because this is one sector that has done well and we will talk about uh, that as well but the main objective of this session is to essentially look back and see what is it uh, that we did what is it that we learned and uh, and then really talk about uh, you know Uh, what's post covid i mean something we talked about a year back but now let's let's fast forward to 2022 and see how uh, the it industry is going to change uh, is it going to fundamentally change is it going to be a short term change and we will go back to business as usual in 2022 that's something that uh, the panelists are going to uh, present uh, present their views on right so i'll just make one point before we start uh, start with the panel uh mark andreessen one of uh, the most popular venture capitalist in silicon valley uh, and founding partner of andreessen horowitz wrote a very interesting blog about a few weeks back uh, essentially talking about similar issues that we are planning to discuss on this panel and uh, you should check out that blog post uh, it's on the andreessen horowitz website and he's made an interesting point he said you know initially we thought that the world economy is going to tank after the pandemic started and uh, because you know people are not going to be productive people are not going to work and then suddenly we realized that the it industry itself trees uh, people could work remotely and people could work from home and as a result if you look at the stock markets they they recovered fairly quickly 
and the economic impact wasn't as bad of course it was bad but wasn't as bad as many people would have predicted over a year back so that's something that we will we will discuss as well right so let me start uh, start with anand uh, uh, anand uh, a broad broad question for you uh, how have the last 15 months been in your view for the industry uh, in general uh, not just the it service industry but it product uh, industry as well and what is it that uh, that you think we have learned uh, going uh, in in the past 15 months and how we will uh, go forward with with these learnings okay so first uh, thanks for inviting me it's a real pleasure to be on this uh, interactive session and i hope you open out the to the audience where we have some amazing people on the line so we'll get their point of view as well i want to start by sharing five points that i think are worth uh, noting So when we did this about a year back, I was quite pessimistic about the state of the tech industry in some sense, and I felt that things were really bad and would get worse. I'm sort of positively optimistic at this moment. A year down, the industry has done quite well. Uh, we all have seen uh, a real growth in the offshore software industry as moving forward. I think this is a fundamental change, and I think they'll create. many more jobs and opportunities for the indian it tech industry looking ahead so that's a positive that i would like to start with the second point i want to make is that in the last 12 to 15 months or so when we have been locked in the digitalization of the community the economy has happened in a very big way everyone is now um, very keen to uh, participate in this uh, the reluctance of people to do e-commerce or various other things has come down quite significantly payment of money all of those things have become lot easier i can see this difference in the context of what we are doing with the asra foundation and some of the other work that we do with smaller businesses but i think uh, digital is uh, digitalization and various things online and mobile has started to become mainstream right now and this is not going to go back to the old times anymore the third point which is a little bit concerning in some sense is the fact that i think that the diversity right the rich getting richer poor getting poorer stock market benefiting the top few percent of the population if you look at the numbers of the rich people that has gone up quite significantly um the people who have have benefited while those who have not have been hurt so the the gap in some sense as people have referred to in what they say is the k shaped recovery where you have the the small percentage of people on the top end who have benefited very significantly as compared to those at the bottom of the pyramid who have actually not benefited and have hurt have been more badly hurt by this thing and this disparity of everything wages access to tech access to capital all of that is going to have long term impact so i think this is something that we need to think about the fourth thing i would mention is that work from home uh people are very comfortable with it on the other hand there are certain challenges that have been exposed in a big way so while work from home is here to stay i don't believe uh it is going to be very easy to implement in the years to come i think there is going to be again this k shape thing that i mentioned some people will be very happy being at work some people are very happy not being at work and getting them all together and working that you know seamlessly is going to be a nightmare and a headache as we look ahead and uh, um, i think the verdict on how this will evolve is not out and it will be good to hear from everyone uh, in terms of what is going on the last thing i want to point out is that you know in the last few years especially since i moved out the ceo role i have had a chance to you know sit back and think about many different things so i found the fact that i did not have to travel i was working from home and on the net i was able to spend my time quite meaningfully doing many interesting things and learning new things so i think for me i have benefited from those 15 months of uh, this thing of just staying at home and this kind of looking around things so those are five points i think uh, i would mention to get started and uh, yeah yeah thanks uh, thanks anand i think that's an excellent start i think the three broad themes that uh, I, i forgot to mention but we would I uh, like to touch upon is one is what is happening with uh, uh, the business model in terms of working the hybrid model work from home going back to work 
the other area broad area is uh, how hiring has changed how hiring and talent management has changed in the it and the software industry and the third and probably very important thing is how selling has changed i think these are three things that we will come and talk about uh, as as we move along uh, prashant let me let me come over to you uh, you represent uh, a multinational corporation with a captive center in india and uh, i definitely want to hear your general perspective as well along the lines of what uh, what anand said but also specifically about how mncs uh, are dealing with uh, with this challenge uh, but you can start with your broader view of how the past 15 months have been and what your personal and your organization's uh, learnings have been yeah so uh, um, thanks amit on a lighter note i think we finally found the answer to uh, commute times and uh, bad canteen food Right. so that seems to be a you know something that we seem to have solved uh, but then uh, uh, seriously speaking i think uh, if i have to put things in perspective uh, i would like to say that uh, uh, nothing changed but a lot changed uh, so if you look at uh, uh, what i mean by that is uh, business imperatives remained right so uh, continuous uh, companies continue to be under pressure to uh, generate profit Uh, uh there is uh, competition in the marketplace that has not uh, you know gone got any less it's uh, increased if at all anything uh, the war for talent uh, has actually increased so nothing is changed uh, because of the pandemic you know as, as far as those things are concerned but then a lot changed a lot changed in terms of how do we deliver to uh, the market uh, changed uh, uh, people's expectations changed uh, uh, you know the employees expectations the employers expectation everything has changed uh, during this particular time Uh, the, at least, if I look at the last 15 months, if I look at the report card, I think uh, you know we did fairly well. So uh, uh, many uh, survived. Uh, there were many who uh, were able to sustain, uh, and there were quite a few of us who were also able to scale during this time, uh, which means that we uh, surely did adapt uh, uh, to uh, the changing times. Uh, smart people also realized that the disruption opened up a lot of opportunities. Uh, so companies i mean we could discover some new business models uh, you know in partnership with our clients uh, even within companies uh, uh, you know we uh, learn to be a lot leaner uh, when i say leaner because of the new way of working we realized that uh, we could do with flatter hierarchies uh, it was a lot easier to uh, uh, you know create cross functional teams and uh, uh, you know make them effective uh, Uh, even smart employees also realize that there are uh, opportunities for growth uh, and much faster uh, and what i mean by that is uh, between functional groups uh, you know if you look at the interfaces between functional groups that's where uh, a, a lot of unearthed value remained even within companies and uh, people could actually uh, swim around there and figure out how they could add value um so uh, uh, in short uh, uh, you know everything that's happened in the last 15 months at least for the uh, tech industry uh, seems very positive uh, now having said that and i'd also like to uh, throw in uh, you know caveat out here uh, the uh, environment outside also has been conducive to this right i mean we say that productivity has increased uh, everyone knows the famous hawthorne experiment right so where uh, because everyone knew the experiment was being done uh you know the results were uh, the outcome was positive but then when things open up outside when malls and uh, movie theaters open outside when gyms open outside when schools start functioning it will be interesting to see how we sustain this uh, productivity uh, that's number one number two is uh, i also somehow believe there were times when people took more than what they could uh, you know actually uh, they should have or more, they, more than they could chew uh, you know just to make a point we just hope that this is also sustainable but i think in the long run i'm i'm very bullish and positive about uh, you know the way we have reacted to the pandemic and also delivered so uh, looking forward to how we sustain this entire uh, piece of growth i think that's that's a good introduction prashant uh, let me let me come over to you uh, giri uh, and for those of you who who don't know uh, giri runs a very interesting business model uh, in his uh, in his venture called ideas to impact uh, where they are uh, i would say i don't know what's the right word is it it's not offshoring it's basically you know taking work to uh, smaller cities and towns uh, near pune uh, uh, basically taking work away from the tier 1 cities that have traditionally been the it hub and it's interesting that he had started this model uh, over 3 years back when obviously none of us knew about uh, uh, what was going to happen in 2020 
but now in what has happened uh, in the past over the past 15 months this is a very interesting model and i would like to understand from him uh, what is his perspective uh, about working not necessarily from home but uh, but from small towns and from small cities and that brings up a very interesting opportunity recently anand and i had a had a great opportunity to interact with one of one of uh, our senior leaders uh, in in the government uh, who was also from a from a smaller city and we we brought up some interesting points and i would also bring that point later up with anand as well but giri before that uh, would definitely like to understand your perspective both the overall uh, perspective of the past 15 months but specifically what has changed for you in terms of working hello can you hear smaller, me smaller smaller towns yeah hi amit you broke yeah, up a little bit so i was not sure if it was a problem on my end or yours but you know again thanks mccci for uh, inviting me in this uh, program which we did one year back and now uh you know catching up on what changed what we learned and so on interesting thing to do and uh, uh to our model uh, amit it's uh, you don't call it offshore is a logical next step of offshoring you know we are always offshoring to the metros and now we are trying to do it from small towns so we call it the smart town model and if you remember last time i talked about it as the work from home town model so you everybody is working from home but they were not working out of their homes in pune they are going to the native places and if they could only have better facilities there because homes are not set up for offices and we have seen we have seen those problems the tech problems are easier to solve but there are other problems as well so i am only going to make a broader comment now and i know we'll dive deeper into each one of these but the broad thing is that uh, this model we thought i, I mentioned last time uh, we thought would benefit out of this covid you know just as y2k benefited india offshoring 20 years back this could benefit this remote because everybody was remote working uh, at that time we were planning a couple of new centers in belgaum and uh, ahmednagar and i have to say that because of covid everything kind of slowed down we talked in june i think and everything kind of like uh, anand said we were pessimistic at that time and so nothing happened but eventually in february we did start the ahmednagar center not yet the belgaum center but we did start start the ahmednagar center so it while everybody likes the idea and everybody is getting comfortable with to physically do those things on the ground still takes time and that's what uh, we we thought so uh, we i mean one of the things that we have to realize is that we have to be thankful to be in it where things have gone really well you know as compared to that if you look at the other industries things have been pretty dismal i mean uh, economy or even health I mean, people have died right a lot of people have, have died so all of these things are really a big problem that we cannot be oblivious to and so uh, while it has done well uh, really speaking in terms of coming out of it we really have to wait and see what happens because i don't think uh, we didn't have those answers last june and i still believe that we may not have the answers even today till we have come out because who knows what will happen in the third wave and fourth wave and so on and so forth but uh, in principle i think people like the idea in fact lot of uh, senior people actually from the industry met me in this period of time saying that this is a great idea you know just like you said and what can be done to take take this forward you know people love this idea of work from home town their governments are interested in fact i should tell you that uh, i uh, in ideas to impact itself joining and uh, if you heard of anshu gaur he was the head of amdocs and uh, he was really thrilled by the smart town model and he could see the opportunity for it and uh, he will join as a group ceo you know uh, as soon as he's back from the us is right now in the us so that's the kind of interest that uh, senior folks have in this model and we do believe that it will scale because of this remote working paradigm change but uh, when things are stable enough or settled enough for people to do things actually on the ground so that that's the general uh, feeling that i've got uh you know the other activity that we are doing for example the fund you know it's boomed i mean <laughs> uh, for the pe and the vc industry there's no uh, you know uh, coming down at all i mean just last last time i remember saying that maybe the valuations would come down nothing of that sort happened so those things are boomed but i know the uh, uh, I, i talked about the hub where you know smaller startups are going to work from home but the larger startups will come in and start working out of the building and that's that's what has happened so some things have happened as we expected that now in our building the startups are more like 100 people startups who 75 people working out of home 25 people taking space so those things some things panned out like we thought uh something's unexpectedly like the fund you know just exploded 
and some things while they're going to happen like this remote working model will happen probably slowly and we'll have to just wait for how things pan out and then figure out uh, how, how the course that they will take so that's the broad outline i'll be happy to dive deeper into each one of your angles such as sales and recruitment yeah. and business models and so on thanks thanks kirian i think we will we will touch upon the vc and the funding angle because that's another thing that has gone uh, gone crazy uh, over the past in terms of the number of unicorns that have come up in india but let me come come back to anand the specific hometown model or small town or small city model is something that we we discuss and uh, i think this is a very interesting uh, disruption model for these cities because uh, uh, as you know uh, everyone knows over the last 20 years 25 years of indian it industry for the most part indian it industry has been concentrated in the top 5 maybe top 10 towns but india has over 100 cities right over over uh, uh, at least 5 lakhs if not uh, 1 million and uh, many of that talent from those cities has historically over the last three decades migrated to the top 5 or top 10 cities uh, now things may change so anand what what do you think of this uh, this change um yes so i do agree and believe that uh, people will work from anywhere and a lot of people will work from smaller towns and otherwise so one important thing to note is that uh, now since people are comfortable and are open to hiring people from anywhere in the country or in the world uh, there would be no reason to set up a company in smaller towns and i'm going to try to argue with giri that you know the covid will actually make your model much harder to do because why would anybody want to set up a company in ahmednagar when they can recruit people in ahmednagar directly so that is an interesting discussion that i think we don't have a solution for i'm not convinced that uh, and i think looking a little bit even further ahead uh, what is the role of a company and where do individuals go in as the context of the company and why do you need a company and uh, would individuals work from anywhere absolutely but will they work for a company that is distributed anywhere not clear will they work for a company at all ever not clear so i think some of those evolutions i am not so sure about but so that that's an interesting point anand so we we, uh, we could be heading towards a bigger gig economy in that sense as in no i am a big believer that we are heading into a gig economy 100% i think in the next few years you will see more and more of that and i believe the gig economy in the software industry is going to happen for sure people will hire for projects and uh, for a for a duration of a period it will become like the movies you hire a team for the movie you kind of finish the movie everyone goes away and then preferably if you have done a good job and the cameraman and other people like the director and the producer you get invited to the next gig so i think this kind of uh, hiring is going to happen and i also want to sort of explore this other idea that perhaps agents kind of stuff like you have in sports and athletes where the top athletes have their own agents and they demand a price and all of that stuff that kind of a model also could happen so i think uh, we are looking for some amazing uh, uh, opportunities and changes as we look ahead which will have far reaching consequences in terms of how employment uh, will change and the consequences to individuals so what should individuals do to respond to a changing changing environment as that might be where you don't have the safety of the employer but you are pretty much on your own That's can i pick that up uh, amit yeah giri go ahead yeah uh, i was actually going to ask anand this question that while employees seem to be liking you know working from anywhere working from any place and so on well, how do companies look at it you know how would persist- persistent want to look at it we already have data points from even the us that some companies want to have their people back in the office so it's an interesting dynamic i can easily see that uh, you know initially Uh, people got this freedom they could work from home for me for example the commute as prashant was saying went down from half an hour to half a minute so you know obviously you are more productive and you get more things done but as eventually you know things start panning out some employees actually did want to come back to the office because of whatever infrastructure problems they might have because of you know the family members that are in the office in the home homes are not set up for office that that's uh, that's very clear uh, one very interesting problem that still being an experiment that is being run is how do you onboard freshers now i talk to people and they say that you know we have onboarded 500 freshers and you know it's going on well and hr will of course be happy that they were able to do that but the impact of that will be seen not today it will be seen after a year that whether that worked or not so there are all of these i do believe that freshers would need that kind of hand holding in the beginning the gig economy uh, uh, for senior professionals or stars in their space is fine 
you know what i see today is that people have gone from that working from office to work from home that kind of a pendulum but it may be coming back as well and i might have mentioned this last time that eventually it will settle down to a work from anywhere i mean today i give this analogy quite a few times that today we have mainframes as well as we have mobiles and smart watches it, it's not that one goes away and the other uh, takes over so everything will find its own equilibrium and there will be different options that have to be given to people in all the ways right. that can work some people might want to work in the office some people might want to work from home some people might want to work from a good office in their native place so you know it could be a co-working place in that native place where yeah, people companies could work but the infrastructure is good so those are the right. kind of options that have to be made available for people to work from anywhere and in that sense our model is already you know proven in this thing and we needs to needs to be seen that what are the options companies actually give and what's the where that does it equilibrium settle down to between the employees interest and the uh, company's interest right so yes, let me add one thing uh, amit yeah. just to conclude on this yeah. topic uh, see I, i think what is important to note is that uh, you have to look at it in the context of demand and supply situation okay right? so if in the next 3 to 5 years i see that uh, it will be a supply constrained market for the tech and it industry so pretty much the companies will not have the leverage or the power to mandate anything so to say you must work from home or you must work from whatever people will not i think it will depend on the employees and employees will choose what is right for them completely agree with uh, that so in that context you have to think about it rather than saying that you know we would like people to work from one place other it's not a, it's not the choice of the employer anymore at least for the next 3 years so i think uh, it will be very much driven by this and the second is in a growing market where everyone is kind of you know trying to hire whatever um people will go after good talent wherever it is available and make whatever concessions they have to make to ensure that they get the best of talent yeah i think this is become this is uh, got me to the next point that i was planning to cover anyway take a look at and some other is, questions as well okay there are some good questions online yeah yeah so i, I was going to move some out to some of those questions uh, and come to you prashant which is we have been talking about this hybrid model and the hiring and the hr aspect of it right and that's an area that i want to touch upon but let's specifically go to one of the questions to bring up this topic right what do you think will be the likely percentage of employees this is coming from sunil uh on a monthly basis will it be 30 50 75 uh, let's say this is 2022 and we are past the past the pandemic but we have the flexibility now where do you think will will stabilize i have a slightly nuanced view to this uh, particular thing i don't think there's a number uh, i think the number is anywhere between 0 and 100% uh, and what i mean by that is uh, uh, see there are various models right so i know at the lowest end you know where uh, companies are uh, taking the easy route you know they kind of saying that we'll go with a percentage 30 40 50 and they divide employees into two groups or three groups uh, and then uh, give them specific days in the week and say you come on monday tuesday and the others come on thursday friday and wednesday is free anyone can come uh, at any point of time there are some who do this over weeks uh, uh, the, uh, uh, i think the next level of uh, uh, evolution is going to be when companies uh, uh you know would identify and that requires some effort would uh, actually do some work study analysis and identify which roles actually need to come uh to offices uh, on a regular basis which are uh, equally productive being at home uh, so that's a next level i think uh, the third level of uh, evolution which uh, again obviously it takes some effort on the parts of companies would be uh, to make it business case wise right so uh if you're doing regular product development you're good working from home you don't need to come here but then if, you, if there's let's say an architectural discussion or a design discussion happening or may a, maybe a business proposal that uh, that needs to go out uh, you know when a war room needs to be created so you know you uh, you bring in people in or uh, for that matter uh, to grease point onboarding right because onboarding being virtually really uh, is losing its entire effect if you're not even able to impart uh, the culture as well especially the freshers i think getting them to spend more time in the company interacting with leaders beyond just their work understand they come with a lot of expectations uh, so uh, expectation what pans out in reality you know there is a lot uh, that happens so they they kind of going to miss out on those things i think moving to that level of i would like to call as business use cases uh, and having an engineering people to come in uh, to work 
uh, that's what will define the percentage so that's why i'm, I'm you know i'm i'll fall short of coming up with the politically correct answers uh, which is anywhere between 45 and 55% let's say uh, but then i would say that it will vary between 0 and 100% uh, and uh, you know companies would need to do some analysis to see what's their sweet spot and there is going to be a movement uh, around that sweet spot i i like your answer it's 0 to 100 anand anand you have a quick uh, perspective on this before we move to the next question no the only perspective i have which is what i said previously is that i think it will depend on the employee rather than on the thing because some employees will not come to work very often they'll come only 5 10 20% of the time while some employees will come every day because that's what their style is and you'll have to accommodate that and the problem this creates huge problem because if you could mandate that people should come 25% 30% at least you know some people are going to be there together you can plan on it so if people decide when they want to come and all that and some of them will choose to not live in places where you have an office then it's even more complicated so i think uh, i think it's uh, going to be a very complex situation and another thing interesting thing that i'd like to throw in here and would love to get comments from people as well as uh, tools right so given that this hybrid work is going to happen in some form or the other what kind of so tools that we are used to today may not be appropriate as we move forward and there are new tools happening so i see two opportunities one is if someone in the group has used some nice tools and have benefited it will be good to learn from them the second thing is that if those of you are looking to build out companies you know there's things to do here yeah anand uh, there's one more question i'm going to come to you before we start looking at all the general questions because there are quite a few but this is an important area and especially for mcci where we have a lot of small and mid size uh, it and software companies as well and that is about sales i mean ultimately that's the most important aspect and one of the thought process uh, that companies had was uh, no travel how are we going to sell and obviously that has changed completely from small companies to multi billion dollar companies they've been selling well and the sectors done well so how has sales evolved and how will it evolve in in this new environment see uh, again you know few things that are going on one is um, people need to get things done right now. so everyone is looking to find ways to get things done so the market is really hot everybody wants to move on tech and improving their infra or whatever else so the work as such has expanded to some extent or has become more urgent in some sense so all of a sudden there's more work second thing is that willingness to accept work from wherever has become little better now now you see it's always you know when we look at all of these things you have to do best available it's sort of the way it works so the situation is there is work somebody has to do it if you are there to get it you will get it so people are willing to accept sales because they are they want to really buy something and if you don't sell to them then they are not going to get it so you know it's become easier everyone needs to sell and another sales opportunity for the small companies i would say is that there is an opportunity for small companies to sell themselves as well i think the valuations right now are incredibly good and if some people want to do do an opportunity to sort of collect cash for some time this may be a good time to sell off the company kind of to a bigger fish um you know collect some cash and then you know while the thing is are good because you never know how long this will last and then you can always come back and start your own gig in a few years again uh amit can i that, that's that's interesting let yeah giri go ahead yes uh, so i have an observation that in the, even the sales uh, even though companies are doing very well and so on uh, i believe that k recovery k shape recovery that anna talked about probably applies to sales as well the larger companies who already had the engines well in place and everything was well set they were that ones who tended to benefit more out of this the smaller companies who were more dependent on the relationships and the founder going out and getting business and all that may have struggled in this period because now they are not you know able to meet different people and so on and so forth so maybe that is also playing out that the uh, that k shape is happening in terms of the larger companies versus the smaller companies i agree with uh, anand's point about the service uh, the acquisitions of smaller companies see because we talked about this uh, resources lack of resources and uh, you know very hard to get resources and so on for some small services company who have a technical ability in some particular space it could be a good very good acquisition opportunity they could get acquired but otherwise i feel that the smaller companies uh, how do they sell digitally how do they sell remotely it's not that easy so, so to my mind it it can happen if they are more productized into the services so that you know the 
differentiation part is coming out of the product on which their services are based and that i think you know we see that happening in i2 as well that you know it's not like basic you know java skills or you know those kind of things but some kind of product on which the capabilities are built that could be the way out for smaller companies to sell globally because uh, it's not just raw services and this is not something that we're talking now we're talking about it earlier also because, uh, even before pandemic but that was more in terms of differentiation margins and so on now it might be required even from the sales perspective that you know how do they sell digitally and remotely if they're just pure play services companies sorry i was on mute let me let me move to some of these questions now they are coming in uh, quite quite fast so dina dina kolkar has a question about uh, you know prior to covid there was a lot of press about it industry being impacted by automation and ai and resulting in job losses or less growth even in the it industry but right now we're seeing they're seeing a spike in demand for digital services and valuations uh, of tech companies right so so is this still a concern for the industry prashant any quick quick thoughts on this i think it will always be you a should concern. ask him You should ask Dina this. I know, I know. I'm going to. I'm going to turn. I, I don't know if it's still on, but uh, actually, that's a that's a good idea. Uh, Prashant, why don't you go Let's first? Then we will we will make an exception and ask Dina to answer that question himself. All right. Okay. I think that will always be uh, uh, you know whether pandemic or not. Uh, uh, that, that's always going to be the reality. Uh, I think uh, uh, commodity tasks, uh, uh, you know, lending themselves to automation uh, and uh, uh, intelligence, as we call it. that's the way to go uh, because companies always would be under pressure for uh, the bottom line uh, but at the same time for productivity obviously bottom line so uh, this is uh, this is not going to go you know whether pand in the pandemic has nothing to do with it uh, i would also say that there will be increased pressure to uh, automate some of uh, and with, with the pandemic uh, some of the support functions come under tremendous pressure because there is a risk of irrelevance for them Uh, and uh, they would need to uh, because a lot of the activities that were very traditional now uh, do, uh, would not exist anymore uh, so uh, uh, many of those activities are going they need to re uh, evolve and uh, recreate uh, a niche for themselves um, so yes automation uh, the risk of i won't call it risk i think the opportunity for automation uh, exists and companies would continue to leverage it yeah so dina dina if you are uh, if you are listening uh, you would like to get your thoughts as well ah okay so let me quickly introduce dina in in one line he is a he is a senior uh, vice president at uh, the largest uh, it company in india uh, that's tcs and but more importantly he's also been a thought leader on many of these issues both in it as well as uh, engineering in general through his work uh, with ieee and bunch of other organizations so dina as anand has said uh, he's turned turned it over to you to uh, put your thoughts on your own question Uh, thanks anand and thanks amit uh, good to be uh, talking to this group uh, so i think uh, one thing which i noticed was that uh, you know always there are these naysayers who will keep on uh, beating us down as an industry and every time a situation like this comes up and uh, we actually used it in with uh, all both the hands and probably many hands together to actually prove a lot of things wrong uh, getting you know they said look automation will drive a lot of jobs uh, you know we'll uh, not be able to uh you know sustain the type of growth and things like that but you know to look at the type of demand uh, that we have in especially in my uh, area of work which is around data analytics uh, ai cloud adoption you know it is like uh, boom time like never before right so it's very clearly the uh, demand is there and we're creating more demand and in fact with the uh, adoption of uh, technology you know the many organizations which had not thought of digital as a, a way forward have accelerated the digital adoption to a level that we are left gasping for breath in in some form uh, not being able to cope up to the type of demand which is there that's one thing which i would say second is uh, you know we uh, completely disrupted certain models you know we talked about agile and everybody said agile means people have to co locate and work and we completely disrupted that with a location independent agile model which was another uh, you know way of responding back to saying that if you are thinking in a particular way hey there is another way of thinking and i think the indian uh, it industry's innovation and uh, disruption taking the disruption head on uh, has been something really uh, interesting to see and observe and i've seen many uh, you know phases you know with the early 90s 2001 the uh, world financial crisis but uh, the last 15 months probably has really surprised and stunned me at the response that the industry overall 
has given to the problem. I think that has been a, a real big difference that I have seen as a industry leader. I think that's a very interesting point, uh, Rina, especially if you look at the disruptions in the past that we have seen. This this can be a great opportunity. It's already become a good opportunity last year and this year and probably going forward. If this is fundamentally disrupting business models of all the businesses, not just IT, it is it is generating great amount of opportunities, yeah. opportunities for IT. Uh, again, while we have you here, let me again <laughs> go back to my earlier question and say it over to you. Uh, I mean, officially also, you, uh, you as a, your company has made uh, some some statements about how many people are are going to be at work and how that model is going to change. Thing that you can share there that's uh, that's been discussed publicly. Yeah, we talked about uh, 25% by 25, uh, 2025 was the uh, mantra that we went with and uh, more of getting readiness and stuff like that. But, you know, one needs to be uh, closer to reality. You know, it's we work uh, significantly as a services organization and it's largely dependent on customers. And I posted in the as a question also that, uh, you know, uh, the cyber threats and the potential risks which are there are uh, a concern. Uh, not just for me, but also for our customers. I think it will all get driven based on how robust or how resilient our systems and mechanisms happen. You know, see, till the time everybody was in a lockdown, nobody was moving around and stuff like that, it was fine. But working from home has worked more to working from anywhere. And at that anywhere is always uh, fraught with a lot of risks, uh, which people will uh, not be even anticipating. And I feel uh, concerned about that in general, but uh, you know, it will probably give a lot more opportunities to uh, build a lot of uh, innovation in the uh, uh, cyberspace and, and things like that. So I would say that uh, uh, in, at least in the interim, uh, it will get driven by uh, the customers, the type of that we support and stuff like that, that will play a very uh, critical role. And uh, one has to be cognizant to that fact. And in fact, we are facing that situation the Western world has opened up and they have started asking people to come to office and they expect the uh, rest of the world also to align towards it. So, you know, I, it's anybody's guess as to what would happen uh, once uh, they start seeing some impacts of uh, a potential cyber hit or things like that. And that will be potentially a, a thing that uh, the industry as such will have to watch out for. Uh, we should play a very cautious foot as far as this is concerned because anything negative uh, hits the industry in a very significant manner. So we should not go too much bullish about uh, talking about it. Uh, be prepared, but at the same time, start building in resilience at every nook and corner of uh, the setup that we have. Thanks, thanks Dina. Giri, Giri, you wanted to come in? Uh, uh, regarding the uh, working from small cities, which- we Right, right. No, I thought you had a question. Sorry, I, I, I thought you were uh, raising hand, but let- I think the cybersecurity question has come up come up multiple times. So any one of you, Prashant, Giri, Anand, want to talk about uh, what are the additional challenges and what should companies, especially small companies, do? Uh, we also did a session on specifically on ransomware and cybersecurity in general for MCCI about two weeks back. Uh, people should also check that uh, on our YouTube channel. But I think that is a concern. So any quick points on, on cybersecurity and threats, especially in this new model? I, th I think that the tech issues are more likely to be resolved sooner rather than later. I mean, as we found last year, the infra was not a problem. Infra was taken care of. Similarly, while security may see an issue, I mean, we will have tech solutions for that. I think uh, so. That is my short answer to that. The other issues of, you know, the, how do you build the culture? How do you build the team dynamics? Those are the more important issues that uh, may take a little more work uh, in, in, making, in, in uh, knowing where this model settles down. Any, any quick point on uh, cyber security to work from home? I mean, I kind of agree with Giri's point, uh, but I think a lot of it would be also forced by uh, uh, our clients. Uh, you know, you know, you know, like uh, even Dinanath was saying, uh, you know, one single threat or, or a perception of a threat could actually uh, draw uh, changes in contracts and clauses. Uh, but then I, I would uh, bet on, and like I said, you know, going back to an earlier point I made that uh, the definition of a hybrid hence would change. Uh, you know, if you are able to identify roles uh, and even within project teams that need to be secure and the ones that uh, can be outside. I think I, I'm banking on our ability to be able to create uh, that mechanism because uh, I'm, I second Anand's point, it's still going to be an employee driven uh, decision, you know, more or less. Uh, so uh, we will need to be a little bit more innovative in the way we organize our teams. Uh, and at the same time, since our clients have also gone through this uh, particular thing, you know, uh, there'll be a process by which they, they, they would also need to be communicated and brought on board. 
uh, with these aspects. So, uh, though I don't know the silver bullet answer, but I'm very confident that uh, this. But I can clearly say from from my company's point, right? You know, our clients have not yet raised it as an issue uh, at all. Uh, but obviously, because their data is secure in our data centers, uh, so they don't care really where uh, you know either their products are being developed from or uh, where the support is coming from. So that that seems to be not a no a no issue for us at least at this point. Yeah, I think this is also one of those classic classic questions where you know if you had asked a company uh, in 2019 that uh, all our uh, people are going to work from home using VPN and security, but you know not from the secured premises, most big companies would have said no way, no way we are going to allow that, right? Yeah. And uh, in March of 2020, everyone had to allow that. I mean, no matter how secure you were, because so so in that sense, this has provided us with a great opportunity to to adapt. And force some of these decisions on us, which probably otherwise wouldn't have wouldn't have happened. I would say there's a, you know a grow, at least an increased empathy even at the client end uh, towards this particular aspect. So I would expect that to continue for some time at least. Let's 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 hope. Uh, so let let me come back to a set of questions that I had, and we have been getting quite a few on that, and that's the whole topic of HR uh, onboarding, training, and compensation. Uh, Anand uh, put an interesting perspective on this sometime back with the agent model or the gig economy model, and uh, that 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 will bring its own set of challenges and opportunities for companies. But even before before we get there, over the past uh, fifteen months, and again, Prashant, let me start with you. How has uh, you know the whole HR processes, compensation management, onboarding changed for you? Uh, especially hiring, and I think Giri also highlighted that point of how are we, especially with pressures, how do we even deal with it? Or people, young people who are just joining the company. So, what's what's been your experience there? Yeah, yeah. So we've done. Uh, 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 so we, you know, face challenges on all these fronts, and you know, with challenges come new ways of dealing. Um, so let me first start with uh, hiring, which uh, seems to be the big elephant in the room because hiring uh, attrition and uh, you know what's happening in the market. Uh, uh, so the obvious uh, thing that everyone has uh, uh, experienced is the fact that uh, salaries have or expectations on salary increments have skyrocketed. I mean, I've come across numbers greater than hundred percent as well. Uh, uh, you know, then people don't show up on the last day. So this used to be a, a lot lesser. In fact, two years back, uh, uh, at least in my company, the uh, joint to offer ratio was almost hundred percent. It was between ninety and hundred percent. Now it's come down to thirty percent. Right, so you you make an offer and then only thirty percent join. Uh, so, uh, but then uh, I, I would expect this would continue uh, at least. So there are two ways of dealing with it, right? One is uh, we also go tactical, uh, but we, uh, most companies that I have at least talked to have taken a call. They are not going to chase salary, so uh, let go and then work work on operational efficiencies. But I think uh, 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 at least what we are beginning to adopt now is, uh, uh, you know, instead of being net recruiters of talent, uh, we've chosen to become net creators of talent, uh, which means that, uh, 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 and this is going to be a, a longer term game. So we will uh, hire at the junior levels, probably uh, campus mostly, uh, invest more in the way we develop uh, and especially with the context of our company. So development need not necessarily just be uh, you know, programming skills. But you know, it, it's also the context. So, so investing a lot in terms of uh, those programs, uh, uh, and then create career paths. Uh, so, if, if if there is a, a a resource requisition for a certain role, then you know we would hire at a lower role. We will not hire at that role. Uh, uh, but at the same time, free up HR's time, free up uh, engineering time uh, to recruit key talent. I mean, you know, uh, so, so the senior talent or uh, special talent, you know, for special skills. So we, that requires a lot of investment. So this is the uh, uh, you know kind of decision that we've coming uh, up to, and uh, that's what we'll follow. Uh, so uh, again, even in terms of onboarding, uh, uh, I, I think one thing that's definitely got missed out in this entire thing is uh, the whole concept of context, uh, or uh, for that matter, uh, uh, making things happen because of serendipity. That right? because see, I mean, in a company. Uh, uh, there are strong ties and then there are weak ties. Strong ties uh, happen because you're on the same project or working on the same product. Uh, and those have really worked well and we've seen productivity increase in that. But then the benefits because of weak ties, uh, you know, where serendipity normally happens, you know, that's lost. So there's been a loss of uh, social capital. Uh, and I think uh, uh, HR teams have tried, uh, I mean, I, I wouldn't say HR, let me generalize. Companies have actually tried a lot. 
to kind of um, uh, work on this, you know, through creating uh, informal rooms. But that doesn't work. I think we need to have a mix of hybrid and virtual model uh, to bring back some of those aspects. Because uh, uh, as we progress, that's something that we'll start missing as companies. Uh, the huge value of uh, serendipity and uh, the weak ties, I'm as well. Let me. Uh, there's a specific question about uh, about employee uh, HR employee well-being. Uh, this is from from Vandana. Uh, Anand, uh, maybe you can take that. Uh, this has clearly been a unique challenge for for everyone, and uh, definitely for employees who are working from home. There have there has been issues in terms of, especially again unique to India in terms of the available space and uh, complexities of uh, multiple. Uh, I mean, kids studying and uh, parents working and all that uh, have employees uh, how have employees uh, tried to deal with some of the uh, stress and wellness issues of employees especially remotely uh, so it's a very complex problem but step by step one is definitely uh, working from home is more stressful than going to work and i think we have not been trained or have not conditioned ourselves do well to handle that. So I think it is much harder than, uh, meaning it's okay to do this for a few days, but as, as we look at 15 months and going forward, uh, this has a toll, is taking a toll on people's health, wellness, lively, you know, just mental health as well. So all of these are, I think, very crucial and very difficult to deal with. Um, two things I would comment on. One is that, um, See, yeah, as employers, employers are very keen to make sure that we can retain the employees, they stay, all of that stuff. So employee-friendly programs from the companies are definitely in. And many, many initiatives are being taken to look at uh, some of these wellness-related issues. That said, you know, uh, beyond a point, um, the way we have to think about this is a little different as how I see this. And two points I would make. These are from the employee's point of view. One is. Um, I really believe that for employees, um, you are responsible for your own career, irrespective of what the company might say. The companies are going to try their best, but they are not in a position to manage your own career and your own life. So you have to stop blaming or expecting the company to solve your problems, but assume that you have to do your own things and you are responsible for your own career and your own life. So this is something that I want everyone to understand that uh, you know, you have to sort of worry about yourselves more than anybody else will worry about you. The second point I would make is that because of the way these things have happened now, um, everyone needs to build a network of friends, mentors, and other things outside of the typical work environment alone. So, um, you know, and this has become easier and harder at the same time. And I everywhere I see the case coming up. But I think every individual today needs to find a way to build their own personal network, which they can benefit from each other, some activities that they do together, whether it is online or otherwise, or people who live in one town, maybe they're working from somewhere else. There's some other ways to get that to happen and then create their own personal portfolio of things that they need to do to manage their health, wellness, and all of these kinds of things and create networks of people who are part of the company or outside the company, but are not necessarily work-related. Because unless you have this kind of a support system, you will not survive in the gig economy that it is heading into. So those are my, my comments. I think uh, all these problems have become uh, much harder to deal with. They are more important than they have ever been. But it's also, you know, it's not clear that there is one solution for any of this. Stuff. So, Anand, let me ask you a related, Actually, Vandana uh, related is another question. Person, you should ask this question, okay? All these yeah. people who are asking these questions actually want to give you an answer. Of course. So instead of Vandana... asking the question, you should ask them to give the answer <laughs> to the question they are asking. Vandana, if you're if you're listening, uh, would like to hear your perspective on 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 this question uh, as well. Uh, let me, uh, Vandana, you're here. Okay, yeah. quick, uh, quick uh, two minutes. <laughs> This oh, is sorry, this is yeah, this is my lunch. lunch. Time. I really wow. apologize. I didn't think Anand would put me in the deep end. Um, no, I, Anand, I completely agree with everything you said. I think the challenge is that we've never taught people to be responsible for themselves, right? Throughout our system, unfortunately, because we have a patriarchal, quite hierarchical system, we've always been taught to follow rules. So I think it's brilliant. 
But what I would encourage companies to do is honestly um, help people unlearn and, and relearn how to be responsible for themselves. And I think you'll get that impact. I'll stop there. <laughs> uh, but no, I think I think you should uh, you should comment a bit more on the on sort of what can I, so let me ask you because you're the real person in this area. So we have a lot of people here who are listening to this. And they may not um, sorry. Uh, they may not yeah. I think somebody else is also on yeah, please put on mute. Otherwise, you need to be on mute. Go ahead on. Okay, no, so so Vandana, my question to you is that. Uh, if someone who is listening to this and would like to sort of sees mental issues or feels stressed or whatever else, there's one channel that they can go to their employer, but there are certain things they may not want to discuss with the employer as well. Mm -hmm. What could they do to help themselves in this model to sort of be more uh, mentally? And yeah, I know you work on this topic, so um, I'm not I, asking I think, a layman this question. No, no, but I, I would say um, there's three words that I use all the time and they're playful, courageous and curious. I, I would encourage people to be playful, courageous and, and, and curious. In this day and age with so many resources on the internet, I think Course Era has got some fantastic courses um, from everything from positive psychology to mindfulness, um, as does Udemy. So the resources are all there. Um, and I think it's just, if someone's willing to be curious and say, I don't have a problem, I just need to relearn how I'm dealing with this issue. I think the resources are there and that's what I would encourage as a first step. And then as a second step, I ask around your friends, who has helped you? What courses have you been on that have been useful? Um, I attended maybe seven or eight years ago, something called the Landmark Forum, which is quite controversial, but I found it absolutely brilliant at bringing me back into I own my life. Um, so I, th I think the resources are there. Be curious and and explore. Thanks, Vandana. No, no, I Sorry. think we will, we will do a- Sorry to disturb uh, your lunch. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, I think, but we will, we will do a separate uh, session with Vandana on this one sometime, maybe, maybe in, a, in a couple of weeks. Uh, sure. But this is definitely a topic where we have a lot of questions and I'm sure it's a it's an important topic uh, in everyone's everyone's mind. Panan, related to this, uh, you you have always uh, given plenty of advice to mid-career professionals uh, as well as students and freshers in terms of what they should be doing with their career, how they should be handling their career, what should they be learning skills and all that. So there's a good question here. Uh, I'm thinking is it's from a fresher, which is in this new environment. Uh, what should uh, a fresher be doing? And I guess my my guess is the question is about what extra things they should be learning, what kind of jobs should they be looking at, uh, what should they be skilling in areas and things like that. So I think it's a good question. In in 2020 or 2021, what's your advice to freshers who are just graduating? Uh, see, the basic fundamental things have not changed. Okay, so um, you have to understand that you have an opportunity right now. So let me explain. One important thing for people in the junior to young career or even middle to mid career people. So you have to think about from the employer's point of view, when you're looking for a job, uh, we are trying to hire best available people for the job that we are looking for. There is certain things we are looking at in your career is your background, but more importantly, we are looking for what you can do for us now. <clears throat> so that's sort of the key. So I think everyone needs to optimize their function. What is what they're looking for? So if someone is looking for a job, I think the best thing is to go look at job postings and, you know, look for what people are looking for and create, build those skills out. But thankfully, you can do that online. Uh, in the short term, uh, you know, that is really what I would focus on is to acquire skills that are in demand if that's your objective is to get the job that you're looking for as a fresh graduate. But, uh, you know, I'm sort of an, also of the opinion that we are going to see a good economy. Everyone is going to be self-employed. Everyone needs to be an entrepreneur. And, uh, you know, you have to find a way to fend for yourself. You have to learn enough to be able to manage your cash and your money, your cash flows. And uh, you have to have long-term plans and work through them uh, step by step. But you need to have a view of where you're heading and you need to define your own purpose and mission. So there are all these kinds of things that you need to do, which we can do in another session today. I'd just say that if, if you're, you have to understand what your objectives are and those need to evolve as you go along in your career. Okay, I think uh, another good uh, session that we could do. Giri, you have a quick point on this? 
uh, a couple of points not exactly related to this, but uh, uh, overall to a couple of points I wanted to make. One is on this uh, point about you know, working from anywhere. I have no doubt that instead of 10 metros, we will have hundreds of cities where people will work from. There is no question about that. In that sense, whatever we are trying to do is being happening, not because so much by us, but by the bigger forces that are, uh, that are, that are at play. Uh, now, I wish what should happen out of this is cities actually competing with each other for the employees or for the people to work from their cities. I mean, that would really be a good thing to happen. I mean, as a first step, yes, work from hometown, people will go to the native places, but people would actually want to go where the living conditions are better. So that I feel that if cities could compete with each other in building better cities, then they could get more people to work out of there. So that is one thing. Or the second option is if they could build some kind of uh, capability or expertise. For example, Nagpur is known for logistics or Surat is known for diamonds and so on. If they could build some kind of expertise around that area, then those kind of professionals could uh, you know, reach to those places. So while 100 places are going to happen, these places will have to compete among each other to attract talent. And that is one, uh, one point I wanted to make. Second point, now once you've gone to the small towns and you're looking at the hinterlands of India, I do believe that the IT industry as a whole has a big role to play on the digital divide. You know, the, the people on the wrong side of digital divide really suffered very badly during this pandemic, whether it was health, you know, the deaths that happened or education, retail, whatever you call it. So I believe there is a chance for, you know, IT. The tech is ultimately the solution, but not just the tech products, which the startups are doing, but tech services companies could play their role in taking these uh, products as a last mile solution to the end people. Maybe those will services play. Lots of people needed, human touch needed, but that's that last mile that IT's companies have to, uh, they are the best place to do that. So that next time we are in a pandemic situation like this, that uh, digital divide is not causing the problems it did this time. So I'll leave it at that. Okay, I think uh, we are we are running out of time. So then how much time do we have? I think another 10 minutes. Another okay. Hour stop. Okay. 115 if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Uh, so so I think let me let me start uh, uh, closing. One one point that I forgot to mention, both Prashant, you and Giri, if you have uh, any questions for Anand, I think this is a good opportunity to bring those up as well because Anand likes to ask questions, but this is our opportunity to ask him uh, questions as well. So Prashant, if you have anything, uh, uh, do go ahead. Otherwise, I'll I mean I'll continue with my my questions as well, but. Uh, any anything that uh, we would like Anand to discuss? No, I did ask Anand one question about uh, what the companies feel about people working from anywhere. I think right, 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 right. So he answered that. That is not right. A challenge. No, I think so. Let me let me come, Prashant. I mean, you don't. I, mean, I just uh, put you on the spot, but I think we can come back to that later. But uh, I think uh, we have talked across a variety of different topics. Now, each of these topics could itself uh, be separate sessions, whether it's, uh, you know, mental health and wellness, whether it's a uh, career for freshers and young professionals, whether it's selling, because all these things uh, are important topics and they have changed some of them significantly uh, because of what has happened in the past past two years. So I think this is giving us ideas Sudanva, about a bunch of follow-up sessions that we could plan in, in these areas. Uh, there are a few other questions that uh, I haven't been able to catch up as yet. Uh, yeah, I'm going to throw one for you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My uh, question is, we are on the chamber forum here, right? Uh, you're on the IT stuff. So what do you think uh, the, that the IT committee can do? And we can ask uh, Giri and uh, other people also. What do you think that the IT committee can do to sort of help the broader community so let's say mainly the smaller businesses and individuals working in uh, companies at large. So is there something that the chamber can do to help uh, make address some of these issues in terms of work from home or whatever else? Um, yeah, so I, and I, I, potentially <laughs> the other industries that are not as benefited by the IT. So can IT help um, to you know, maybe the agriculture or food industry or whatever else. Yeah, so I think Anand, I mean, that's something that we were uh, specifically targeting. And I think uh, MCCI, obviously, uh, bulk of our members are uh, from the manufacturing SME sector, uh, even though we have IT members. And so let, let me take that in two parts, right? Uh, for, the, for the manufacturing and for the non-IT industry, 
we have been doing some sessions. In fact, we did a, a very interesting session two weeks back with uh, Rohit Srivastav, who is one of the top cybersecurity experts in the country. And that's a very important topic because many times small companies, uh, especially small manufacturing companies, which uh, don't focus too much on IT, uh, to be made aware about cybersecurity and ransomware, which is a new threat that is affecting, uh, that's a threat to every kind of company now. So that session was very well received. And uh, that session, as I mentioned, is available on the MCCI YouTube channel. Uh, we hope to do more such sessions because I think making uh, SME manufacturing uh, companies and other sectors, non from IT, aware of uh, basic uh, security and IT infrastructure challenges is very important. And I think we, we continue to work, work on that. Uh, Sudhanva can also share some more. Uh, let, me, uh, let me add one thing yeah. for you, for the benefit of everyone yeah. else. So one of the problems, so as I said, you know, in the next two to three years, the IT or tech industry will hire in large numbers. Consequence of that is that the manufacturing companies will have difficulty hiring people. So there'll be things manufacturing, meaning non-IT companies, because you know this is going to be a price war. People are going to keep paying more money, so all the other people will not get the service that they need. So I want to appeal to the entrepreneurs here. This is a great opportunity for those of you who want to do something on on your own to consider the services that these smaller or non-tech companies might need and provide them as a, you know, sort of a on SaaS, SaaS version of it, meaning pay for pay as you go type models where these companies could de deploy and employ you. Like some of the things that you talked about regarding uh, uh, threat assessment, security and all that. So if I'm a, I may not be able to hire a security expert, but can I or get someone to look at uh, what I'm doing every once a week, maybe twice a week or whatever else, right? So these kinds of pay-as-you-go services, I think there'll be lots of opportunities for individuals to create new businesses that uh, we can do that. And if uh, if you're interested, um, uh, we could, um, I mean, you may want to look at what kind of such businesses may be there, maybe create a, a forum to encourage people to go on their own. So I'm sort of on this mission to, help people become self-employed to the extent possible. So wherever possible, I've been telling this that, hey, you know what, this is a great opportunity to um, jump. There are lots of businesses who are gonna need the, there is need right now. If you address, a, if you do creative solutions to address those needs, um, this is the time to get going. And I would put a plug for Thai and De Asra and various other resources that we have available. Uh, so we can uh, definitely help you out if you want to go on your own. Yeah, I think that's an important point. Uh, I think I was going to come to the second point, which Sudhanva also added. Uh, an area where small IT companies and small individual contributors in IT can help uh, uh, manufacturing, especially smaller manufacturing companies, is upskilling them or helping them upskill on the industry 4.0 technology, right? This is an entrepreneurship opportunity for individuals or small companies who understand IT and tech because manufacturing itself is undergoing some big changes. And... Uh, Again, the small companies will get left out. Uh, so they are desperately looking for help in, in these areas. Right? I mean, cybersecurity is more on the defensive side, but this can actually open up more business, more interesting opportunities for them if they are uh, ready to, or if they start adopting some of these newer uh, industry 4.0 manufacturing, digital manufacturing technologies. So that's another opportunity for, for the smaller companies. and. Uh, the Marada Chamber has done a bunch of activities over the past year, past two years, uh, even before the pandemic, on this, and this is something that we continue to continue to do. So that's, that's another area. Uh, so I think we are we are almost out of time. I'm just going to. Uh, I'm going to throw one more question uh, yeah. to Giri this time, okay? And I'm at, uh, I think as you would have seen, right? We have seen a growth of investments and people investing into smaller companies. And I believe that I think this is a good time to invest in uh, primary markets, meaning invest direct. Of course, the stock market is doing what it needs to do, but that's a secondary market type investment. I think uh, in the next few years, I would see a boom in the in the industry uh, kind of situation in different ways and an opportunity for investors, individuals, and otherwise to invest in primary markets or meaning companies directly. And since Giri, you've been running a VC fund, do you see an opportunity for people to invest in the fund or do you have opportunities for people who want to invest in local companies? Is there a way we can enhance? Because see, if companies in the smaller business, let's take a small manufacturing company 
Uh, I think if they made a little bit of investments, got some tech and everything going, they can really expand their business dramatically over the next few years. And that investment will need money. And could could some of the people in Pune contribute that money to make this whole thing happen? So any thoughts on that? No, absolutely. So that was the whole intent behind starting this first fund of Pune. And uh, as you know, most of our investors are first generation entrepreneurs out of Pune. So that and the opportunity is there. I mean, like I was saying in the beginning, uh, the PE and VC uh, industry didn't uh, have any slowdown at all. They just boom. So there's a lot of money and needs to go into a lot of uh, product companies, very, very interesting product companies. We have already in the past four, five months completed over 13 investments. Very uh, powerful and strong in uh, entrepreneur community, very savvy, very enthusiastic, very knowledgeable. So all of those pieces are definitely in place in terms of the money where it is come, going to come from and money where it's going to go. However, the one piece that I said earlier that these are all technology companies. So all of it is concentrated on tech. And, uh, you know, a lot of it is also looking at global markets. And, uh, you know, that's where they are seeing the scale, uh, scale up. And, you know, a lot of companies are also moving then to the Northern American markets and European markets and so on. Whereas, as you were saying, there's a lot of uh, need in the Indian market, not only for the services, but also for employments to be created. And that is a challenge. You know, a lot of these startups, a lot of money are pursuing a very small set of tech uh, technologists. And that is where the uh, recruitment problem is very big and the costs are going up and so on and so forth. That's where I was, I touched upon this model earlier that I'm looking at a B2B2C kind of a model where in the B2B part is going to be tech, tech platforms and you get investment there. And so you get the tech resources there. But you also have this B2C part where you now are taking the solution to the last mile through a large number of people. Because in India, you need that you know um, human touch. And this is what will actually be the right model. So you uh, get the investor money in the technology part of it, but you build services companies to take the solution. I mean, if everybody is in subscription mode, you do know what is customer success, adoption, consumption kind of a model. And this is what actually Anshu Gaur has been talking about quite a lot, that he, the reason he's joining, he's running this 14,000 MDOCs company. The reason he's joining is because he sees that as a lot of uh, opportunity and this um, combination for me also is great because we are running a fund on the one hand, we are also running a small town uh, services model on the other hand. And I see that as converging. And this is what, you know, uh, it's a validation when people like Anshu are, uh, you know, joining, investing, becoming whole time directors and group CEOs of this activity. So that to me is the model, Anand. Prashant, any last comments before we conclude? Uh, on the, on this topic, no, but I think uh, oh, over, oh. yeah, overall, uh, uh, I think we've been through the first phase. Uh, the second phase would be when the environment uh, opens up, and then uh, you know how companies uh, deal with it. Uh, I don't think things changing and you know are going to switch back to where they were before. Uh, it's for uh, individuals and companies to understand that uh, you know there will obviously be waves and blips in productivity, but we need to. Get over that. I believe that. Uh, I mean, I'm uh, you know speaking positively. Uh, it, it's uh, going to be a bullish time ahead, uh, very very clearly. Uh, I think from an individual's perspective, also nothing changes. Focusing on uh, using it as an opportunity, making sure that you are uh, learning, and because you know a lot of new opportunities, like I said earlier, are getting created within the companies themselves. Uh, making sure that uh, cycle times of uh, new technology changes have also reduced. So it's actually an opportunity for young younger people to uh, leverage this uh, and uh, uh, you know flourish. Right. So uh, uh, I, I would give a positive tinge to the next three to five years definitely, and uh, take it from there. Uh, just make sure that the learning process continues. Uh, also, there needs to be a, a need to externalize and benchmark oneself uh, because there, there's a lot of talk going on about uh, everything is going to get normalized, including salaries. That's not going to happen. It might happen to a few uh, who are worth it and who actually show value at a global level. But, you know, for the regular people, it's uh, it's still going to be uh, fairly the same. So I hope that Siena Council uh, would prevail even in the salary uh, uh, market because uh, that's when the real development will start to happen. Anand, you want to conclude and then I guess Sudhanwa can uh, wrap it up finally. No, I think uh, I've said enough. Uh, I think uh, as Prashant mentioned, I think there's an opportunity. Uh, it's going to, anytime you have a disruption, it creates an opportunity. And I think every individual uh, professional needs to think about, you know, how do I learn, keep learning and uh, try to grab opportunities as they come. So I think uh, 
things are getting stable, markets are opening up. These are the best times to grow. Giri, anything? Or Sudhanva? I think I'm, I'm done. Thank you. Okay. Sudhanva, over to you. Yeah. Thank you, Amit. Um, and thank you, Anand, Giri, and uh, Prashant uh, for a wonderful uh, session. Uh, with your permission, we will also put this session also on uh, YouTube so that any more people who could be here uh, today can also join in. Uh, so I take it that you, since you are all part of the family, so I take it your permission is granted. <laughs> So, uh, and uh, thanks all of uh, the participants to, uh, to have been here. Uh, I know it's middle of the day and a working day too. Uh, so, but uh, having uh, all of you here and quite a few interesting questions and quite a few interesting models within these uh, Q&A session where Anand prodded some of the audience also to uh, answer their own questions. So, which is really, really good. And uh, I think it's all uh, good, enjoyable uh, discussion we had. Uh, so thanks to all the audience and the speakers um, and uh, my team, uh, Amol Joshi and uh, Amit Ambekar, who helped put this together. Uh, so thanks. Uh, we'll uh, shortly put this on YouTube and share it widely. So thank you thank so you. much and look forward to many more sessions. And I think uh, this session actually has given birth to quite a few ideas. So, uh, Amit sir, and uh, we'll work towards getting some of those on board very short. Thanks a lot.